Hello everybody and in today's video we have the brand new Ineos Grenadier. Today I will give you a tour around the vehicle and then we'll take it out for a quick spin at the end. So what is the Ineos Grenadier you might ask yourself? You probably thought it was a Land Rover Defender. Well it's sort of the spiritual successor to the old Defender even though there is a new Defender of course. However the new one has become more of a luxurious SUV while still having off-road capabilities a less expensive G-Wagon as I would say. This however left fans of the old Defender a bit disappointed and that's where Ineos saw the gap in the market and decided to make a modern hardcore off-roader. The exterior design is of course what reminds us of the old Defender. So much so that there were actually some legal issues between Ineos and Land Rover. Ineos currently offers three body styles, a passenger, a cargo version, and most recently they also made a pickup truck version. Powertrain wise, Ineos decided to outsource it to BMW, as its two engine options are both 3 liter straight sixes from BMW, either gas or diesel. The gas one being the legendary B58 engine, which has a very good reputation for reliability and also for tuning. Both of these engines are connected to a 8-speed ZF automatic transmission, once again a very good off-the-shelf part. This was a very good decision in my opinion, since these two options, the ZF transmission and the engines from BMW, are very good off-the-market options that have been tested and proven to work and it would be a waste of money for Ineos to develop their own engine and transmission. When Ineos designed their car they kept in mind the target customer. Someone who is an off-road and adventure enthusiast. And what do these people usually wear? That's right, cargo pants. With lots of pockets and places to attach things. So Ineos decided to put this utility belt along both sides of the vehicle. This is useful if you want to attach or hang straps, jerry cans, and lots of other accessories that Ineos offers. On this model, the owner opt for alloy wheels, which are wrapped in BF Goodwrench all-terrain tires. I personally prefer the regular steel wheels as it gives it a more utilitarian look. And the suspension is also a traditional coil suspension, since air suspension would be less reliable harder to modify and it doesn't give you a lot of suspension travel especially if you were to raise it up in its highest level. Another traditional aspect is the chassis. It is a old school body on frame ladder setup. Moving on to the interior this is where you'll see the biggest difference with any other vehicle. It is still a very modern design with all the amenities and technology that you need. However, they still kept in mind the off-roading target. So up above, you have all the switches which you need in an off-roading vehicle. Your lights, your diffs, your different driving modes, and also more auxiliary switches since they know that people will be putting more accessories to this vehicle such as lights and winches. You also get these panels which can come out or you can just pop them up here and they can vent. Ineos took a more Tesla style approach with the infotainment system and the dashboard since in front of you you only have this small screen where you have warnings and your blinker indicator and in the middle you have the infotainment system with your speed as well. And of course you have this recognizable BMW shifter for the 8-speed ZF transmission as I said. However you still have an old school uh, low range selector as well as an old school handbrake. Overall, the interior is a very comfortable place to be whether you are driving on-road or off-road and you have all the amenities you need once again to drive on-road or off-road since most of the people who will buy these vehicles will take them off-road and they won't be just some pavement princesses such as G-Wagons or even the new Defender. Now this one is a higher option vehicle, that's why you have leather Recaro seats. You, the standard one comes with cloth seats and a more plastic steering wheel, which could be met a bit better for off-roading purposes. And as I said, because we have a BMW power plant, you do have to pull the lever twice to open the hood. As I said, the only power plants are both 3 liter straight 6 BMWs, gas or diesel. 
The one here we have today is the gas version with the legendary B58 engine. This one produces 486 horsepower and 450 newton meters, whereas the diesel makes 250 horsepower and a lot more torque at 550 newton meters. Now, these are relatively modest numbers for a modern day 3 liter. However, this does help the longevity of the engines, as producing less power means less stress for the engine. And these power figures are still more than enough for cruising and off roading. This one has the optional snorkel which not only looks cool, but helps the vehicle when driving through water. In fact, the vehicle has been rated to 80 centimeters. However, some owners have gone even deeper. Now, the car itself has impressed everyone, whether it be on-road or off-road. The main question is, how will Ineos, as a car manufacturer, behave and function as this is their first time producing a vehicle? For now, there isn't much aftermarket support, which is something off-road buyers do keep in mind as they usually plan on modifying their vehicles. Once again, we have that utility belt that spans on the side of the car, as well as a sticker reminding you that they are actually built in France, even though Ineos is a British company, and most of the parts are actually from Sweden. For roof camping enthusiasts, the roof itself can hold 100 kilos, but if you put a roof rack, then it can hold up to 400. Within the spare tire holder, there is actually a storage compartment, which once again shows that Ineos is trying to keep that practical mindset. The rear barn doors open 3070 and they can be individually closed. So if you want, for instance, to be able to use the ladder, but also have your trunk open, you can still do so. Another practical option is a pop down table from the tailgate. In this case, it's just a first aid kit. Now, to clear up any confusion, this is the passenger version, hence there are rear windows, whereas a cargo version does not have any back windows. However, this being Belgium, a country synonymous for high tax, this one has been converted into a light freight vehicle, making it much cheaper to tax yearly, and it's also better if you have a company. Hence the lack of rear seats and this partition behind the front seats. One thing that does stand out is the sheer number of tie down points as Ineos expects its customers to be hauling lots of equipment as well. Up front you can opt for a 13 meter integrated winch which hides behind the front number plate. To conclude this short review, I've been very impressed by what Ineos has made given the fact that it is their first car ever made and the main thing is that they based their idea on what was to continue where the old defender left off and improve on the formula of course and i'm very intrigued on how these cars will perform over the long run as well as ineos as a car company In the infotainment system, you can also track lots of different parameters of the vehicle, such as temperatures, pressures, pitch and roll angles. And one thing which Ineos developed was this Pathfinder page, 
which allows you to upload your own off-road trail or follow other trails made by fellow Grenadier owners. So it is really nice touch to try and build that Ineos Grenadier community.